So thanks to everybody for attending. My name is Rachel and I'm from M Agency hosting the webinar this evening. Just a couple things before we get started. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and the health department will be sharing it on their website um, later down the road. Uh, we'll be taking questions at the end of the presentation. So if you do have any questions for any of the presenters, please put them in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. Otherwise, thanks everyone. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and hand it over to Tim. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Tim Hagen. I am a senior water quality planner and TMDL program manager for Pierce County Surface Water Management. Uh, I'm happy to be here with my colleagues and partners at TCPHD uh, to share with you the program that you're all here to learn more about. Um, this is a very important program to the county, and it's a very important partnership and, and sense of teamwork that we uh, conduct with the cooperation of TCPHD. Um, I want to share with everybody today uh, the, the driver behind the program that we're going to spend the majority of tonight talking about, and it's attached to the Clover Creek Total Maximum Daily Load Alternative Plan. Um, this approach to regulatory planning was offered by the state as an opportunity to the county to do the kind of diagnostic work necessary to re resolve some of the water quality impairments the data has established for Clover Creek. Clover Creek is impaired for dissolved oxygen, uh, pH, temperature, and bacteria. And so as it's shown on this slide, the Clover Creek is listed on the state's what they refer to as their 303D impaired waters list uh, for bacteria. And so um, I just wanted to share with you a little bit about the overarching goals of the Pollution Identification and Control Program, of which this OSS Operations and Maintenance Program is a part of. Next slide, please. So I'd like to share with you just again, a quick uh, suite of bullet points to kind of give you an idea of what's at work here. Um, we have this contract uh, with TPCHD so that they can conduct on-site septic OSS operation and maintenance program. And, and that's a part of the outreach that you've um, been responding to and why you're present here today. Additionally, um, the county will conduct some very innovative bacterial monitoring program to get ongoing information to determine whether we're having the kind of success or cause and effect we hope these programs will will produce. And so we're introducing some new technology that will help us really improve our ability to respond to what actually is occurring in Clover Creek when it comes to these pollutants. One of those is this new Proteason technology that has been federally certified by the EPA, and it's the first technology of its type that can give us real-time indications of bacterial presence in water columns. So it's not about just going out there and sampling and sending it back to the lab anymore. We now have this new technology that literally can tell us every 15 minutes how, what the bacteria levels are in the water column um, ongoing 365 days a year, 24 hours. So that's, that's a remarkable improvement in our ability to understand what's going on out in the, in the real world. We also have this Tecta micro lab technology, which allows us for redundant testing. So if this proteasan indicates that we have high bacteria counts, we go out to the field, we do take direct samples from the creek, and we can go right back to our lab and drop those samples into this technology and again, get rapid test results very quickly. And in response to persistent high levels of bacteria, we then can initiate what we refer to as bra bra progressive bracket sampling, where we try to kind of concentrically tighten the focus area around the areas we believe are the sources of the pollution. And much of this new detection technology will help us do that. Additionally, uh, TPCHD will assist SWIM with investigations for correcting identified sources of bacterial pollution that originate from OSS. But equally important, and I want to share this with everyone today, is that on-site septics are not the only focus of bacterial pollution that we're giving attention to. Uh, 
that we're also doing what we refer to as quarterly uh, investigation, detection, elimination field screenings. And this is, again, being out in the field, looking at different land uses that have the potential for delivering bacterial pollution and screening the waters around those parcels to make sure that there isn't other sources of bacteria that may be causing the pollution other than on-site septics. So the point is, is to be equitable, to be holistic, and to be able to have a program that can put some focus uh, on all the potential sources and land uses that may contribute to this kind of pollution. The idea is that with pollution identification and correction, bringing the right technical assistance, the right kind of funding and support, uh, we can find partnership and cooperation with the public to support the goals of improved water quality. So with that, I want to pass it over to Niels. And I want to close by saying again how much I appreciate the partnerships that we have at CPHD. It's a real pleasure to work with my colleagues over there. Thank you. Okay. Hope everyone can see that. Uh, my name is Niels Nikolaisen. I am um, in the Operation and Maintenance Program at Tacoma Pierce County Health District, Health Department rather. Um, I'm here to talk about our outreach. Well, it's actually our notifications that we're going to be doing in the area about having septic systems um, maintained and inspected. I'm going to go through the program of what we're going to do and what you'll start, what you'll see in the mail. Um, I'd also like to thank my coworker Amy Pearl for helping me put together this presentation. So why have septic system operation and maintenance in the first place? Well, the goal of the, of the operation maintenance program is to make sure your septic system is working properly, to minimize risk to public health, and to protect water quality. We want your system to be working as it originally was designed and intended to be used. The least expensive septic system you own is the one you have right now, so we would hope that you would want to protect your investment. Regular inspections can help find and correct and solve problems before they come ma become major. And this can save you money in the long term by avoiding costly repairs or replacing your entire system. We want to minimize risk to the public health. A failing system can impact your drinking water if your well is nearby. A failing system can affect your neighbor's property. And a surfacing septic system can be a major health hazard to your family, pets, and friends. <laughs> we want to walk through that stuff. Um, and we want to protect water quality. That's what Tim was talking about earlier. Uh, a failing or malfunctioning uh, septic system can impact the water quality of marine water, streams, and freshwater lakes. So what is our notification process I talked about earlier? Um, you will be receiving a series of letters um, asking you to get your systems inspected. And you will first receive uh, one notification letter with a due date of just over 60 days um, after you receive the letter. So for instance, first round of letters, we anticipate being mailed mid-April, mid dated around 4-15, 2023, with a due date of June 30th, 2023. Uh, the first notification letter that you will receive uh, includes also a list of all the certified septic system um, inspection and maintenance professionals that are approved to operate in the county. We also have an insert that has uh, frequently asked questions about the program and about septic systems in general. And most importantly, we also are going to have information about um, our financial assistance program, which I will go over in more detail later. Uh, we do send out second notification letters, uh, just a reminder that a septic system, your system inspection is past due. Um, there's a new date on this letter for a June 30th inspection due dates. So if you haven't had your system inspected by the middle of the month in July, 2023, you'll be sent this second letter, probably around mid July, most likely dated 7, 15, 2023. The new due date on this letter will be approximately 45 days after the letter date. So for instance, a second reminder letter dated 7-15 or July 15th will have a new inspection due date of August 31st. If by that time you have not had your septic inspected, 
we will also we will then send out a third and final notification letter. The final notice that its final inspection is due, you will only receive this letter again if you haven't already had your uh, inspection done. These are sent approximately 45 days after the inspection due date as listed in your first letter. However, the same new due date that we had in the second letter is on this final letter. Now on this letter, the language is uh, a little bit more, um, it's a little heavier. It's, a, it's an actual notice to correct violation letter and it includes language about a certificate of non-compliance being placed on your property title. I want everyone to note that the letter does not state that we have already re recorded on the property. It states that the process will be started if an inspection is not completed by the due date shown on that letter. And then if we aren't contacted, eventually a certificate will be recorded. So if you get to the point where you've received this third letter, this is a really good time to contact us if you haven't already, it's very important. Uh, we will work with you, give you more time, can't afford it. We have financial assistance, which I'll go over. I just say, please, please contact us if you've gotten this letter, even if you hadn't received the first two or they got lost in the mail. If you get this letter, please, contact us. Um, we would rather work with you and get the inspection than to go through uh, the enforcement process. Uh, just a little no quick note about certificates of non-compliance. Um, they get recorded typically at least four months after the initial due date. So again, you have time. Uh, the certificate is recorded with Pierce County auditors and goes on a title to property. It's similar to a property lien, but not technically a lien. It, however, because it's on the property title, it can affect future sales or development of property of the property. And you have to pay the fee in order to you know, sell or take the loan against property if it's brought up on the property title report. Currently, the rescission fee is $850, excuse me, $815, I'm sorry. Um, and that has to be paid in order to remove it, as well as your operation and inspection um, your operation and maintenance inspection also has to be up to date as well for us to remove that. So I wanna go over financial assistance. This is a very important part of our program. As you can see, these are um, this is the form that we have. It's on our website and I will give you the web address for that later. Um, we realize that the cost of these inspections are these inspections are new to you and that there's a associated cost with them. So we wanna make sure that you get them done. So we do offer financial assistance that can offset the cost of the inspections. Um, it's real basic. You uh, you fill this out or we can fill it out for you. Uh, the first page is just contact information. The second page is the, what's called a self-certification page. And you self-certify your income level. And then you sign a date and we would pre-approve it. As you can see, I don't know if everyone can see this. It might be kind of small on your screen. But uh, we can give up to $125 off the inspection itself, $125 off risers if you choose to do risers or if you need them, up to $200 off pumping your tank if it's required, and up to $500 off minor repairs. So for instance, if they go out to your site and they find that you need a repair after it's been inspected, then um, we would offer up to $500 off that repair. Uh, minor repairs include things like, uh, let's say, crack lid, pump replacement, alarm panel replacement, tank baffles, things like that. It's basically things that don't require a full permit that they can just handle on site. Um, when we receive this form, uh, there's a couple, actually a couple of ways we can do this. Uh, you can go on our site, fill it out, and email it or mail it to us. We can, um, on the page two here, we would pre-approve it and send it back. Or um, actually, which almost works better is uh, if you were to contact us via a phone, we would fill out the form with you online or and, and then send it to you already pre-approved. And that basically just gets rid of one of the steps. So, um, and I wanna mention too, that uh, I didn't put the third page up here, but the third page lists all of the septic companies in Pierce County that are um, participating in this program. So the letter, that you receive with your the first letter that, was, that you receive that has a list of all the contractors that, that are um, certified, not all of them participate in this program. So the third page will show you those participating uh, companies and you wanna call one of them. 
after you've got this filled out and let them know that you want to use this program. They are all familiar with this program. They've been trained in it and um, we vetted them to make sure that, you know, they know how it works. They take the uh, discounted time of service. So you don't have to worry about reimbur being reimbursed. So for instance, if you go out and they want to do an inspection and that's all you need, they don't find anything else. And let's say, I'm just going to throw this out. It's two to two, two fifty, whatever they charge then they would discount the 125 and that would be on their invoice. So you would you would get the, in, the discounted amount and then they send it to us for reimbursement. So we try to make this very simple and easy on, on the um, property owners to use. Um, just real quick, other financial assistance that's available. It's not necessarily something that um, we offer, but there are these, this is also on our website. There's a clean water loan program from Craft3. Uh, they basically do affordable loans for septic repairs, replacement, or sewer connections. Uh, typically, they deal with larger projects, like if you're going to replace an entire system or a drain field or a tank, things that uh, require permits. Uh, the USDA also has a rural development loan. Um, they You do have to be in a, what they consider rural area. And um, so you would have to go to this website and contact them to see if you would qualify. But they have both loans and grants as well. And I've been told that they will they will um, fund both major repairs as well as even minor repairs. And then also, if there's a sewer nearby and it's available for connection, Pierce County Public Works and Utility Sewer Division provides matching funds to help connect sewer properties with failing systems. Again, it's income-based. Um, and so that's another option. And then um, we also offer um, extensions. So for instance, if, if you have a due date in a, in a couple months uh, and you've never received a letter before, you've, you've, you know, you've never had to inspect your system and it's just a huge financial burden, we can offer actually extensions to that. So you know, up to a year. So we want to be respectful of any financial barriers you may have and it gives you more time to kind of plan for it. So that's another thing that we would offer as well. You can see that email there and that phone number. Um, those are the emergency you would call the contact information to request an extension. Um, that's also, we also mentioned that um, in our letters and the frequently asked questions as well. So just um, uh, want to make sure that everyone's aware of that as well. Um, this is the uh, website right here that is where the uh, financial assistance is, is uh, that's where it's housed. So um, you can write that down. Uh, actually, this, this will be um, posted, this entire um, uh, presentation will be posted on our website. So you'll be able to see it there. That's also where it's going to be located as well, the videos on this page. So I want to give you kind of a timeline of what's coming up. I did kind of talk about earlier um, when loan notification letters will be sent out. Right now we have them slated for April and May of 2023. So right around mid-April next uh, next month, around the 15th, we're going to be sending out about 400 notification letters to um, some of the areas in, in uh, North Fork Clover Creek and basically another 400 or so in uh, mid-May. Again, those will have due dates of um, June and July 30th, respectively. We've already sent out about 300 last year to certain areas. We kind of spread them out. Um, and then another thing we plan to do is some outreach, just in case you're interested. We are planning to have um, septic, some septic workshops coming up. The septic workshops, are a little different than today's presentation. They involve um, talking about kind of basic troubleshooting for on-site septic systems, kind of tips and tricks and do's and don'ts of how to use them, why maintenance is important, which I kind of went over, um, how to get copies of your on-site records and how to properly landscape around your septic system. We're actually gonna have a specialist come in and talk about that as well, if you're interested. Um, again, that's coming up in May and October. Uh, we also are, trying to put together a septic social at some point um, later. In, oops, uh-oh, I want to do that. <laughs> Get my, there we go, oops, sorry about that. 
um, septic social and we're actually kind of looking for people who might be interested in hosting that. Uh, the way septic socials work is that we have, um, usually it's held at a private property owner's home and then people um, go to the home and they learn about how their septic system works and maintained. And usually there's a, maybe a septic professional that would come there and um, kind of open up the system and, and let everyone look at it and see how it works. So honestly, we're looking for volunteers if anyone <laughs> wants to volunteer their house. Um, again, if you want to learn more about any of these topics, you can go to this website here, septic care, TC, tpchd.org, septic care. Um, that has information about all of our project areas, including the North Fork Clover Creek, as well as um, financial assistance, frequently asked questions. And again, it has where the videos, these videos um, are going to be housed. If you have any questions, my name is Niels Nicolaisen, as I mentioned earlier. There's my email. Um, if you have specific questions about financial assistance, um, anything about your septic system, um, and, you know, who to, maybe something about operation and maintenance in particular, probably these down here are the better numbers because I may not always be available. The This number and this email are probably better because they get routed to a variety of people who may be able to answer your question um, in a more timely manner. There's about four or five of us that, that actually get that um, are tied into these numbers. So um, again, I just want to mention, this is where our frequently asked questions are um, on our webpage that go over some a lot of the material which I covered today as well. And with that, I will stop screen sharing and I will hand it over to George. All right, thank you, Niels. Uh, I'm going to give me a second here to bring up my presentation. One moment, please, some technical difficulties here. All right, thank you for being patient. Uh, can everybody see that uh, presenter? Somebody can give me a yes. Um, George, it looks like we can see your notes. Okay, that's uh, what I was afraid of. Okay, well, I'm gonna stop sharing then. I will go to... Sorry, excuse me.
Are those notes as well, Rachel? Nope, it looks good. Thank you. Okay, thank you again for being patient. Um, a good good evening. My name is George Wan. I'm a supervisor in the on-site sewage and drinking water program. So uh, I generally do permitting of septic systems, but uh, what I would like to do today in follow-up to Neil's presentation is just give you some resources. And in addition to the ones that he provided or elaborate on a couple of others um, that relate to your septic system, knowing what type of a system that you have, records on not only what it is, where it is, and when it's been inspected, and then some resources that you can use to take a look at it in your own yard, on your own property, and see what you can see, and then give some expectations associated with what a professional might do when they come to your property. So let's see here, how do we advance now? All right. The first topic here is something Neil's highlighted, which is an as-built or record drawing of your system. And uh, so there's some websites that are referenced here. Uh, what we will do is we will provide you the actual links, um, you know, the full links to all of these so that you can see specifically how to get to these different websites if that's uh, something that you would like to do. But uh, the first one here is uh, document search. And where this is handy is, you've probably asked the question of yourself, uh, perhaps at times like, where is my septic system? Um, where's my septic tank? Where's my drain field? Is it even on my property? Am I connected to an individual system or am I connected to one that's connect, you know, a number of people are connected to? So all these scenarios exist and the way that you can figure out where your system is, is if we have a record of it. And this is where you would go to try to find that. And um, so once you're at this site, uh, you can see there's some keywords in a search. And generally speaking, and it says, I believe right here in the finer print, but you wanna generally put uh, an address in that is, that is uh, generic. So in this case, 2401 35th, as opposed to 21, oh, 2401 35th Street East or Court. The less specific that you are when you enter it, it will give you more results, but it will also not potentially exclude the property that you're looking for. So I would, I would have you start as general as you can with, a, with an address and a road. And usually that will bring up uh, properties that you can then search and see whether or not uh, your property is there that's specific. And it will also have a parcel number associated with it. And you could also search by parcel number if that's something that you're interested in doing, but most people use address. Um, this is open to the public and uh, you anyone can look for, for anybody's stuff, but certainly, uh, you know, you're certainly gonna be more interested in your own property and what's where things are at. The types of records that you will find uh, will be septic locates or, or record drawings. So drawings of like where your septic system actually is based on the records that we have. You'll also see records in the system related to any permitting that was done on the site and uh, the details and the, and the uh, documents associated with those approvals, as well as individual well applications and approvals and site plans as well. So it would hopefully give you as, as much information as possible if we have it related to where your infrastructure is, whether it's uh, septic tank components, your well, and where these things are on the property. Certainly, as you might expect, uh, there are varying levels of detail on these records. So generally speaking, the newer the records, the more detail is available. These partly things get more detailed as we go along in life and more requirements for different things. But that also works to your advantage is the newer it is, the more information that you will have on the system, the type and all of the components and details. If you do have an older system, it may be less sophisticated, but it will at least hopefully tell you generally where the septic system is, uh, where the tank is and approximately setbacks to property lines, et cetera. So that's a real good resource for you to start with. 
if you don't know anything about your septic system. And the other advantage to knowing some things about its location would be uh, if you're doing permitting on your property, you would also be able to identify like, I wanna expand my house or put a garage in or do some other sort of development activities. It helps you understand where is your septic system so that you don't uh, propose those things over the top of your drain field or over the top of your tanks. And that at least you can consider that when you're deciding where to put these things. And because certainly if you're gonna damage that or uh, impact that, that might require replacement of your system. And certainly most people would like to keep the system they have as Neil said, and operate with that one because it's the cheapest one that you'll ever have, as we say. So that's a little bit of an introduction on the uh, document search piece. And then we, I also have reference to our main website and Neil's had some links to a uh, website and operation and maintenance requirements and resources. If you go to our septic systems section of our website, uh, there are a number of resources associated with um, uh, different system types. We have a, uh, a model of what a, a septic system looks like in 3D. You can look at that. Uh, quite a few different things to go to if you're web savvy and you like to look at things online on your own dime. It's a great resource. And that, that full website link will be in the chat or in the resources when they're provided online. All right, the other important resource that you have available to you is something called Online RME. And this is a, a private company that uh, most counties work with through contract to uh, house the inspection data from all of the inspections that are done across Pierce County and many other counties as well. And this is also open to the public, but it's the database that all of the professionals in Pierce County are required to report all of their results to. So, and we have, uh, just as an aside, we do have someone on the enforcement side or certified professional side that helps to make sure that these folks in the certified professional world are doing what they're required to do and get these reports in and make them available to you and to us. Um, when you go in and search for these things in online RME, uh, we have a link there. Uh, you can do that again by street and street number and address. And that is usually the easiest way to do that. You can also use a parcel number. And again, using less specific terms can be very beneficial to finding your individual property. But it'll bring up a number of them and you can find the one that's specifically yours. Once you get into these, uh, into the database and see that you've on, you're on your particular property or the property you're interested in, there is a section called service history. And that's the, that's the section that you would probably want to focus on. And it will be an inventory of all of the inspections that were uh, performed on that particular property since we've been using online RME. And I think that's going back quite a number of years. I can't remember the year exactly at this point. Maybe we can put it in the chat if I remember the specific year, but it goes back to like uh, early 2000s. Um, in that range. So, uh, you know, there's quite a number of inspections in there for a number of properties. What you'll also see is the date the inspection was done, uh, what type of inspection it was, the company that performed the inspection, and then it'll also have a link to the actual inspection results themselves. So you can pull up an actual inspection sheet, which they're required to complete, and it will, it will have a number of categories showing the different uh, things that they look at that are involved in inspection, from general site conditions to all of the different components that make up your septic system. For example, you have a septic tank on a general system and you have a drain field for a gravity system. And it gets more sophisticated from there. But all those elements will be in there and different inspection criteria for each of those. And then also whether or not those criteria that they evaluated were in compliance or had deficiencies. And if there are deficiencies, uh, there, we do take a look at those as a department and a part of the O&M program. And uh, we would look to see those deficiencies corrected over time. So we certainly pay attention to those and 
work with you and the professionals to make sure that, uh, that you can get those things fixed and keep the system working properly and, uh, and as it was approved. So that, those are some of the main, main, main things and advantages to using online army and taking a look in there. Uh, I would recommend that you do that and look up your own property. And then my final slide relates back to just some basics of what is involved in a, what happens when the o &M company comes out to your house? What's gonna happen? So certainly they can, you, you can work with them to have them explain to you um, what, what it is that they will do. I think that's always a good idea. Uh, just like if you were, you know, having your car repaired or your furnace serviced, you know, it's always a good idea for those large infrastructure or large items to understand what the company's doing for you and what those costs would be. Some of the main things that they're going to be looking at clearly are the components of your system. Uh, that would include the septic tank. And if you have a pump tank, they're going to look at those things to make sure they're, they're solid and watertight and are operating correctly. They're going to look at water levels in the tank to make sure that those are at the proper level, to make sure effluent is coming, isn't coming back from the drain field. You know, that would be a sign that your drain field is not working well, or that the, the tank effluent levels are low, meaning that there might be a, a crack or a break in your tank. They're going to look at your alarm and your control panel, if you have one. And for many new systems, that will be on the side of the house. It'd be a sort of a typical looking control panel like your electrical box. But what it does is has controls in there for the septic system. And they will look at that to make sure those controls are working properly. And there are also alarms oftentimes associated with those. And I don't know if any of you have had this happen, but certainly, uh, you know, it isn't uncommon for those alarms to go off. And you're wondering, what the heck is that alarm going off on the side of my house? Well, that means something's wrong with the septic system. And that means that you should probably call a professional at that point and find out what's happening and what needs to be dealt with so that that operates correctly. And then a couple of other things they look at are treatment units. Uh, newer systems have more sophisticated treatment units associated with them. And those also obviously have bells and whistles that need to be maintained and looked at by a professional oftentimes because that they're the ones that need to assess those things. Um, not much you can do uh, with those units. Um, there's a drain field area inspection. So, and this is something that you can do regularly, which is really walk in the area of your drain field if you know where it is and make sure that there's no soggy spots and, or, you know, unnecessary odors uh, that might be indicative of surfacing sewage. Um, and they'll also look at that area themselves and look at vegetation and, um, and just assess whether or not they believe it to be functioning correctly. And then if you really want to dive into some detail, uh, we have detailed expectations that we have of our certified professionals when it comes to performing O&M inspections. And that is in our chapter two code, and I will have that link available to you. Uh, I can't link directly to the section, but it is section 44 of our code. So if you just go to the code and go to that section, it's a fairly easy read and pretty straightforward, uh, uh, really kind of bulleted items as we go through there. And the key for you as an owner of a septic system to understand is, you know, it is your responsibility to make sure that it's maintained. Um, and you do need to use a professional to make that happen. But we also know that people have concerns that, you know, what is this person doing? Are they just coming out and collecting my money and not doing anything? Or can I trust them? And I guess the two things I can tell you is that we, we do regulate them. Uh, we certify them annually and we make sure that they have the proper tools, they have the proper skills and the proper training. And uh, we do follow up on complaints associated with these inspections if people have concerns. And we make sure that they are reporting things properly and on time. And all of those things are outlined in section 44 and in our code in general. So at that point, uh, at this point, I'll stop there. And uh, certainly if you have any questions as we get to the end, I think Rachel will highlight questions you probably already have had, but I will be available for those. So thank you. Awesome. Thanks, George. Um, 
Yeah, so we'll now go into the question and answer portion of the presentation. So there's been some uh, questions that have come in in the Q&A. Um, if you have any additional ones, do feel free to put them in there and we'll start rolling. Um, all right, so our first question uh, is, my system looks and is working fine. So why do I need um, an inspection? Uh, Can yeah. anyone, everyone okay, hear me? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start my video too. Okay, started talking before I hit the mute button. Um, so short answer is it is technically required by the Washington Administrative Code. It is also required by our local um, uh, Tacoma Pierce County Health um, Chapter Two in our regulations. So that's the short answer. Um, that's why we're sending out notifications. Um, even if we weren't, um, you know, it's a good idea to have it looked at at least, I'd say, even if we weren't notifying people and um, actively enforcing the rules, uh, it's a good idea to have it looked at every three to five years anyways. Um, and so, but the the real, driver behind this is it is it is in the rules it's on it's on it's a code that's required and um so that's uh and that's not me everyone who wants to hear but that's that's the uh, um that's the kind of the reason why um and the other thing i might want to add too is just because your system appears to be functioning and it's not backing up to your house doesn't necessarily mean that it is <laughs> it um, there are many times where having been on sites and um, uh, inspected systems for home sales where the property owner wasn't even aware that their system was failing. They didn't weren't aware there was a cross connection with a um, uh, drainage system. And so, you know, just because it appears to look good and working fine, uh, that's not necessarily something that you can assess without having a professional go out and look at. So that I would I would also mention that as well. Um, having seen many cases uh, in my experience where systems that you know if I walk the property look fine, but then you find out later you know the tanks missing baffles, it's or a leaking tank. You know if a tank's leaking into the ground, you wouldn't see that from the surface. Another example. So. Um, and that, and once that goes subsurface, who knows where it's going to go? If you're near a water a shoreline or a water body, it could be, you know, direct discharging into that. So um, I, I don't know if that helps, but. Um, Can I offer a, a more sure. short comment to underscore yeah. what Niels is sharing yeah. with us? Um, in addition to both the county regs and the Department of Health, there are the Department of Ecology regs and standards that apply also. And there are programmatic expectations that are imposed on the county um, that are originating from that state agency as well. It has a separate uh, set of what is, on first glance, a redundant set of standards, but they work more as a companion set of standards uh, so that there's a more holistic understanding of what the, the, the thresholds are and the different reasons why we're trying to remedy them are both associated with environmental regs and health and human uh health and human safety so if, if i could just offer up a an additional comment here just to i mean because this is a very common question from folks and i understand that it it, it is uh it doesn't often feel like it's a worthwhile venture to go into so looking at it from a practical standpoint and not a requirement standpoint, uh, you know, if you have an old gravity system, you know, oftentimes it, it's working until it's not. And that's how it sort of turns out for folks. But the one thing that we're trying to accomplish with operation and maintenance is to make sure that that system will continue to function. And so one practical thing that can happen is that if your system is not, if your tank is not operating properly, for example, in a gravity system, it, became, it can be letting solids out into the drain field. And then it tends to clog up your drain field and lead to premature failure of that drain field, for example. 
So one of the benefits of an inspection is to make sure that that you're not having that happen, that baffles can be installed and that those are in, in good shape. And then the other example that I can give you would be uh, the system feels as if it's working fine because it's not backing up or surfacing. But for our purposes, from an environmental standpoint, uh, the groundwater could be being impacted because the tank could be leaking. And um, if it's not inspected, we can't assess that. So we want to make sure that that tank is watertight as it should be and that sewage is making it to the drain field. And then we obviously want effluent making it to the drain field, not solids. And in those old gravity systems, the drain field is what does the treatment for the sewage. So if you don't have good treatment in the soil for the sewage, you're directly discharging uh, fairly high, high waste strength or you know, a lot of fecal matter, fe fecal uh, coliforms and pathogens into the groundwater. And that's certainly not a good thing. So that's that's some of the practical reasons that I would cite. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, okay, you might have somewhat covered this, but um, the next question is uh, that they've already had a pumping, but not an inspection. Does that count? Um, I'll answer this. Uh, can everyone hear me? Okay. Is that good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, no. <laughs> um, although uh, pumping is uh, part of an inspection, or it could, can be. I mean, they're going to, you know, pop the lid in the tank, either your tank or pump tank. What we require as an, a full inspection is every component. So, for instance, in a simple gravity or pump to gravity system, that would include pump. Uh, lifting the lids off both the tank and or pump tank, as well as locating the drain field, walking the drain field, looking for anything that could be surfacing a drain field, anything built over the drain field, anything um, that could be impacting it, um, as well as looking at the tanks. So, um, and in a case of a, an alternative system that has many components, for instance, a, a pre-treatment system where you have an aerator, or you may have a, or you may have a, a UV bulb. Um, you're going to have timers. You're going to have uh, floats in there that ha that need to be, you know, in your pump tank that um, have to be inspected to make sure they work. You're going to have to basically look at your your alarm system to see, make sure that's working. There's if it's a pressurized system, making sure that your dosing's proper properly, uh, dosing properly. So there's a lot more to it than just pumping the tank, particularly on a um, more complex system. So that's why when we say we require full inspection, um, that all the components are looked at. Um, I don't know if George wants to chime in a little more on that, but that's that's the difference kind of, the tank pumping is just to pump the tank. Uh, and they may or not even look at the rest of the system. So, uh, but we want the full system inspected. Okay. Uh, next question uh, is this individual is curious what record drawings are. I can address that. Cool. Since I obviously didn't do a good enough job of addressing it in my presentation. Thank you folks. Uh, so yeah, a record drawing, we use the words record drawing and as built uh, drawing or as built record synonymously. So basically they're the same. Um, basically, when you do, when you design, install, and get approval for a septic system, whether it was in 1960 or yesterday, uh, the requirement was for a record to be produced at the end of that process, when the health department approved it for use, that would document what was installed in the ground and where those individual components are located on the property. So that's what a record drawing is. Um, and as I said in the presentation, they come in very varying forms and in varying detail. But what it can do for you is at least give you an idea of what it is that you have in the ground. And it also should give you some indication of what type of a system it is, whether or not you have just a septic tank or you have additional components besides just a septic tank and a drain field. Um, and those things should be shown. And it not only has a site plan that shows these things, but also has a little bit of additional detail 
related to that installation. So hopefully that answers your question. Thanks, George. Yep. Um, okay, next question. Uh, with these inspections being a requirement and cost money, would it be cheaper to try and hook up a sewer? You want me to tackle that one, Niels? <laughs> I'll yeah, tackle go it. for it. <laughs> okay, yeah, certainly I think any of us could certainly answer this, but uh, I guess the main thing that I see with regards to sewer uh, is it needs to be available to you. So I do a lot of work with Pierce County public uh, planning and public works as well with the septic systems and trying to coordinate those sorts of things. And sewer is just simply not available to many properties in the rural areas, especially. And one thing that I would find is that uh, certainly you can contact Pierce County and find out where the nearest uh, service main is and whether or not you would be eligible and they would have capacity to connect you to sewer. So that would be something that you would have, in, in theory, go to Pierce County if you're in the unincorporated Pierce County as an assumption here. Um, and Tim, Tim might have some more, more information on this, but, uh, and uh, so there's, there's a lot of times, uh, not a lot of options for you to do that. And when you do have options to do it, oftentimes it will be, you know, it'll, they'll ask you to connect once your system fails uh, in that area. And we would coordinate with Pierce County on that and decommission your existing septic system. Um, if you have a new, new property that you're trying to develop, as a part of that development process, we would look at that time as to whether or not you would be either required or eligible to connect to sewer. And that would be a discussion item at that time of development. Anything to add to that, Tim? Yeah, um, as a long-term planning issue, yeah. if we institute these programs and we are successful at getting the cooperation we need, and accounting for all the surface sources of pollution that we're attempting to control, and we don't see improvement in the bacterial counts, it may indicate that the density of use and the carrying capacity of the soils and land may not be up to the challenges of the existing OSS systems that are in the landscape. That information ultimately would be summarized and transferred over to the sewer division from surface water management with the idea of initiating some kind of master planning where they would be reevaluating long-term planning for prioritization of septic extensions or sewer extensions to those areas that we're experiencing ongoing problems with even when we try to remedy it with the types of programs we've been talking about tonight. So, um, you know, it may really at the end of all our effort be a limitation in the landscape and the fact of the intensity of human use. And, and if that's the case, then we would have to figure out a new solution to get to achieve our goals. That's a longer term remedy, a much more longer term planning type of process. Great, thanks guys. Um, all right, next question is, if uh, I'm unable to find a drawing of my septic systems, what is the best way to create one and get one on file with the health department? Okay, I'll tackle that one. Um, so that is not completely uncommon. So some folks just simply do not have records of their system. Uh, there isn't a simple way for the health department to do anything with that. So it would be kind of up to you as the private property owner. Um, most of the septic service companies these days, as technologies have advanced, um, use cameras to go, you know, put a, put a camera down the, the pipe, just like they would do for inspections of your sewer or your piping in your house or things like that, to be able to identify where your system is. So they would start at your tank. They would generally be able to find your tank based on where your stub or your, your vent for your, um, for your outlet, for your, for your wastewater from the house. And then from the tank, they will be able to use a camera and go through the, through the tank, out the outlet, and hopefully follow the pipe as it goes and be able to trace and then document where your system might be. 
So depending on the level of specificity that you're looking for, certainly they can tell you, you know, to start with, here's your tank and here's your drain field going this direction from your tank. And it's generally, you know, in your front yard or, you know, in your backyard or in your side yard, that sort of thing. If you want more specific information, uh, the septic service companies can actually go to the point uh, where they can actually map it out for you and show you where each of the laterals are if you have multiple laterals. So I didn't really cover that in my, in my discussion, but most drain fields will have one or more lines or laterals as we call them. So, um, you know, and uh, to achieve the, the necessary area you need. So oftentimes systems will have two or three laterals associated with them. Older systems may just have one, but that's what the septic system can, company can do for you. And most of them have that capability if you contact them. So that's how I would recommend moving forward if you really want that level of detail. Um, one final thing would be that if you are going through any permitting process, uh, oftentimes what we will do in permitting is require that you do a locate of a system that doesn't have records so that we can better make decisions about where your system is and what we can permit and where. So, um, but nobody wants to go through permitting just to find your system. So um, contact your septic professional and see if they can help you out. Thanks, George. Um, all right, our last question uh, is this individual is curious if the septic socials are outside or not. Um, I'm assuming they would be <laughs> because, uh, you know, they, they would, uh, be at someone's house and you would be looking, you know, at their septic system. So yes, um, I have not attended one myself, but, um, you know, if you're going to be looking at someone's septic tank, <laughs> it's outdoors, it's not going to be, um, Although, you know, if there, you know, maybe, maybe there's a portion of it where you meet indoors, but you would be going outside to view the septic system and how it works as part of the septic social. Um, so. Great. Thanks, Niels. Um, oh, oh, you got another question. Um, how difficult would it be to get training on servicing septic systems and get certified by the health department to do inspections? Niels, do you want to handle this from a certification? I can talk about homeowner inspections if you want. Um, or, yeah, I, I guess I'll just address it. Niels, jump in if you want to. I'll start with it, okay? Niels, you're muted too, by the you're way. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, and I'll just fill anything in that. Um, okay. You yeah. Mentioned. Um, That's fine. So this is a this is a somewhat common question that folks get. In and Niels, Niels is uh is the one that would be. Uh, in, in charge of this, but um, I've been involved in the past, so this question has come up. Um, some counties have a homeowner certification process by which they can inspect the systems themselves if they are of a simple type, like a gravity system. Uh, Pierce County does not currently, or TPCHD does not currently have that program, and um, we are looking at possibly developing it, but is not close to being something that is available to folks. There are, I would say, pros and cons to um, having a, a homeowner certification program. Uh, we need to ensure that the system is properly inspected. Um, and we do acknowledge that some homeowners may be able to do that themselves. But historically, in looking at other programs on other counties that have allowed these types of inspections, they have not been done consistently and have not been done well. And one of the things that we're uh, certainly charged with is to make sure that those things are, those things happen. And so it's not that we don't acknowledge that some people have the skills and possibly the interest in doing that. But at this time, uh, we do require a certified professional to do that work. Um, and your question specifically was about how to get certified. And um, because we don't have a specific homeowner uh, inspection program, if you were to get in 
to get certified as a quote certified professional, just like a company and you know uh, a firm, uh, it would be more difficult than you would probably want to to go through just to do your own system. If you are interested to do it as a professional, which might be part of the question, um, we have folks, and Nils could probably speak to this, that you could contact and, and also on the website to find out what are the requirements, uh, educational and um, different requirements associated with becoming a certified O&M firm. And uh, and how to maintain that. That's available information. So, Niels, do you want to follow up on that uh, or anything else? Yeah, I just I just mentioned that um, it may be cost effective if you are planning. Like, for instance, if you're a, a owner of multiple properties and they all have septic systems, in that case, it there there may be um, a financial benefit to get certified uh, as a professional ins inspector um because you have multiple properties and and then you know once you're certified too you know you could do your friends your family members and if you wanted to i suppose you could even you know start up a business and charge for it but um it would be most advantageous i would think if you were going to go through the certification process and the cost of that plus all the required continuing education and um license renewal fees uh, it make more sense if you had multiple properties or or if you plan to do your own plus maybe some friends or family members as well. Uh, it, but uh, it's certainly doable. I, I think that would be kind of more the the um, the reason maybe someone who wanted to do their own uh, inspection uh, would do it because it would, you know, if you were to do maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 different properties every year, maybe maybe that would be a, a good re good reason to have your own certification. Um, but if you were doing just your system, I don't, I think I kind of agree with George, it might be not very cost effective uh, due to all the fees and licensing and the continuing education. So I just thought I'd chime in with that. But it could be done. Um, and we do, uh, if you have any, if you have questions about that, you can contact me directly and I can point you to our website area um, where uh, that process, it's an application process. And then it would go into kind of what, what you need to do to be certified, so. Great, thank you. Um, all right, last question we're gonna take this evening. Um, the house that my wife and me are trying to buy has our neighbor's drainage pipe and is filled in our yard. Does uh, his have to be inspected? So I'll, I'll start out just from the septic standpoint. Uh, Perhaps Tim might have something to share about surface water management associated with properties. Um, this is something that we we hear a lot. And uh, why why is someone else's drainage on someone else's property coming onto my property and potentially impacting my drain field? Uh, these are things that we, as the health department, don't regulate. We simply require that you try to maintain your system. So I don't have any avenues for us to come out and tell them to stop draining water onto your property or uh, you know, where there are drainages or where development happens, uh, where that water goes. So it is certainly something that we're, we're sensitive to and understand that it can impact your property and specifically your septic system. But uh, from the health department standpoint, we don't really have any regulatory authority over that. So um, Tim, is there something you'd like to add on that? Anything? Yeah, when you encounter that scenario, there's usually a period of discovery. There may be some explanation or an easement in place in which that discharge crosses a, a parcel boundary. Um, and so you need to examine whether those types of caveats exist um, prior to you know uh, trying to find further resolution. Um, the other thing is, is although it may not be associated with our, our, our public conveyance system, our illicit discharge and detection elimination program should be dutifully notified. They may have a role to play because that's their job is to identify illicit discharge and to find resolution in correcting them. 
And so uh, it may or may not fall under their purview, but I would recommend that you give that program a call over here at Surface Water Management and pose those questions. If they can't help you directly, they'll be able to guide you as to what portion of the county uh, can, can receive your, your questions and, and your need for assistance. Great, thank you. All right, that's, uh, that's the last of the questions. Um, thank you again, everybody, for joining us this evening. Thank you, Niels, Tim, and George for your guys' presentation. Um, like I said, this webinar is being recorded and will be shared on the Health Department's website. And with that, everyone have a good evening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. It was a pleasure. Thanks, everyone. That was great. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Bye. Bye-bye.